All right, we're back. We're still on page 54. We're still trying to write equations for uh, trig graphs. And we look at this, and uh, we got a situation, right? Because we don't have a graph. We just have a bunch of dots. But what's nice about the dots, I guess, um, is that uh, they definitely seem to form a pattern that I'm kind of familiar with. Right? It looks like these are the maximums, minimums, and intercepts of a trig function, or of an infinite number of trig functions, actually. Um, so let's see if we can work with that information. So I don't, I'm not even going to put in the curve. I don't really need it. But uh, well, actually, I guess I will put it in because maybe I do. I don't need it, you know, but like it could be convenient. So I'll put in like one. So the reason I didn't want to do this is like that what that's not a great looking curve. Um, but it gives you a sense of it, right? So if we look at this, we can still identify maximums. Uh, we can still identify minimums. And we can still identify the sinusoidal axis. So because we can do that, I mean, we don't need the graph. We just need to know those points, which kind of gets back to like when we were creating the graph, right? When we were creating the graph, we really focused in on just those points, right? We would plot the points and then just kind of sketch a curve. So you don't need as much information as you've been given before. So what are we counting by here? I think fives. So the maximum looks like it'll be 25. The minimum will be five, which means I need to average those. So 15 will be the sinusoidal axis. I put that in. I can go up 10 and I can go down 10, which makes the amplitude 10. Um, the period of this thing. So it looks like we're counting by 10. So uh, the maximums and minimums are not at particularly nice values, but the third intercept that I see does fall to nice values. So if I go from here to here, that's definitely one full period and it takes 30. So the period is 30, which is good. because we need to know the period. We don't use the period for anything. Um, other than for it to tell us the increment. So I, I know the increment is 30 over four, which I guess I'm gonna make 15 halves, or 7.5 if you prefer, whatever. And then we also know that two pi divided by B is equal to 30, which means that B, what? B is gonna be pi over 15. So these are all pieces of information that we need. Are we really, are you really gonna crash on me again? Man, unreliable. It's like a great app, but it crashes just all the time. I, I don't know why. So some of my students also use it and uh, like mixed, mixed signals. Like some of them say that it crashes on them all the time. Some of them say it never crashes on them. I don't really know. We lost a lot of information here. So that stinks. Uh, the period was 30. So the increment was uh, 15. So 30 over, so 15 over two. And then uh, B we said was pi over 15. So just a, skipping over the, the explanation again, because I'm keeping it in the, it stays in the video. So got to keep it. All right, if I start at zero, so I'm looking at the graph. So hopefully you have the graph in front of you because I might need to scroll to like write these. So this is going to be at X equals zero. And then I'm just going to go by increment, right? So the increment, so this will be one increment over, so at 15 halves. And then I'll go another increment over. So that doesn't seem right. Because two times another, oh, another increment over is 50, is 30 halves, which is 15. Okay, so that makes sense. At x equals 30 halves. I confused myself with that 30 in the numerator. That's like actually what was going wrong in my brain. And then it'll be 45. You could use decimals if you want. I don't like using decimals all that much. Um, I feel like other than when I need to like really calculate, like approximate some dec like approximations basically. As soon as you hear approximate, now you're, now you're talking decimals. All right, so what do we got here? Negative sign. So f of x is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna do this one weird. I'm gonna say 15 sinusoidal axis, and then I can go minus 10 sine. And then pi over 15, I think, x minus zero. 
So read with the sinusoidal axis. Sometimes that makes sense. Uh, I especially like doing that when the, um, when the value of A is negative. I don't know why. Um, so like here, I, I would also like to do that. Say F of X is 15 minus 10 cosine. I just think it looks better, even though I don't do it that often in the videos. I do it all the time in uh, you know, my personal life when I'm finding equations of trig functions. And then the next one is gonna be a positive sign. So f of x, I'm gonna keep, keep at it. 15 plus 10 sine pi over 15, x minus 30 over two. And then finally, uh, positive sign, the last one should give us positive cosine. We do start at maximum. So f of x is 15 plus 10. And if you keep going consecutive intercepts, you better cycle through them, right? If you're, if you're going to tell me there are two different negative sign graphs by going consecutive intercepts, uh, con increments, I should say, not intercepts, uh, I'm going to tell you that you're definitely wrong because it can't happen. All right, so far so good. Uh, now we have this nonsense, 975 over two. Ugh. Uh, so what is that? 975 over two period is 30. Um, so 30 is 60 over two. All right. So the period, you know, I mean, I could just divide by 30 and do uh, 90, 975 divided by 60 and like work out what that is, but I prefer to do it in a weird way. So 30, which is 60 over two. All right. So if I multiply this by 15, so 15 periods is going to give me uh, 15 times 600 is 900. 15 times 60 is 900, 900 over two. Uh, so then let me add uh, one more period. So plus one period, you give me 960 over two. So I'm gonna do 975 over two minus basically 16 times the period, uh, 16 times 30 should give me, so that's 960, uh, that should give me 15 over two. So I think this is coterminal to 15 over two. And since I think it's coterminal to 15 over two, I think that this and this are the same. So I'm gonna check it on the calculator, but that's what I usually do. I usually just kind of like play around with it. So f of x should be 15 minus 10 cosine. So this presupposes that I got the previous problem right, like part uh, equation number two. If I got that wrong, then I'm definitely wrong here. Like there's a lot of other ways I could be wrong, but that's a, a particular way. Uh, let's go to the calculator and see. So uh, new, new document for me, I guess. And I want to graph. 15 minus 10 cosine of pi over 15, the quantity x minus 15 over two. And then I gotta change this window to see something. So I go menu settings, uh, let's say, let's go with x from, let's go negative 10 to 120, negative 10 to 120. And let's have y, I'm just looking at what's graphed here, negative five to like 30. Pretty good. All right, so that's the one that we were pretty confident on, and that definitely looks right. Uh, so now 15 minus 10 cosine of pi over 15, x minus 975 over two, and enter. Yes, very satisfying. Um, so we got it right. So I got it right because I just kind of played around with numbers. You could go back and review, I don't know, it's like notes, it's like pretty early, maybe notes two, uh, like coterminal, principal coterminals, uh, if you want like to use formulas or whatever, but it's better just use the idea of like, how many full rotations can I subtract off of this? So what I do is I go searching for the number of rotations that is closest to it. And then I kind of play around with it from there. It's a little easier, I think, uh, especially if you don't have a calculator. If you have a calculator, just go for it, use a formula, use a floor function, whatever you want to do. Um, here, I think it's easier to like, you know, mess around with the numbers. Anyway, I'm going to end this here, come back in the next video, and uh, I bet the next video will not end the notes, but we'll be on the last page of the notes. 
Um, and that's probably a good thing. So I will see you there.